Hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Jenna. I am an international who has been living here in Germany since 2014. I share on this channel all of my experiences, the bumps that I've made along the road while relocating here to Germany. And I don't just share all of the funny moments, but I also really try to include a ton of useful and helpful information for you guys. And of course, I have tons more information over on my website, lifeingermany.com, if you guys want to check it out. But today we're going to dive deep into a topic that was not only super important to me when I first got started, but is so important for all of you as well. And it's something that I find a lot of us tend to kind of just skip over or put aside until we figure out all of the technical things that we need to do when getting started here in Germany. And that is figuring out how exactly we plan on growing personally and developing in this new country. So today we have Lucina Bolin from lucinabolin.com and she is a personal development coach that actually can help expats on their way to relocating and basically finding their spot here in Germany so that they feel comfortable, they feel welcomed, and they know what steps they need to take in order to feel comfortable here and to be happy in this new country and this new environment. So I find it really interesting what she does. And I also know from experience how important it is to channel your inner emotions, if that makes sense, and understand them and prepare for this big move because you can't just put it aside. You have to focus on this in order to ensure that you can have this amazing and this successful experience moving to a new country. So we have Lucina on the call right now and we are gonna jump in, we're gonna do some introductions and I'm really looking forward to picking her brain, asking her all of these questions that expats typically ask when they first get started with her. So hopefully this will give you some insight and help get you a little bit more prepared when getting started here in Germany. Let's go. So I actually recently met you, Lucina, and that was over on Facebook. You had mentioned that you had built this ebook of how to allow you know expats to thrive in their new environments and how to make the best out of a situation and as soon as I saw it I was like oh my god who is she you know what did she do <laughs> this was absolutely you know like that missing puzzle piece to relocation for me and that's because as I've mentioned before to a number of my viewers it's so important you know not just to have that technical aspect but to also be able to link that to your emotions and be entirely ready you know sometimes you're emotional state or that part, that portion of relocating is actually more important than the technical uh, part at the end of the day, because sometimes, you know, it just doesn't work out. And sometimes people end up going home and then they think, or they like to blame it on, you know, a number of other situations, you know, like the paperwork didn't work out or it was just too tough or I couldn't do this or that. When I think a lot of the time people don't realize that it has a lot more to do with their emotions and how prepared they actually were uh, mentally before they came. So I thought uh, the information that you were able to build and, and send off to some of these expats in the different Facebook groups has been absolutely incredible. So I checked out what you were all about and I thought, oh my God, I have to get in contact with her. She's absolutely amazing. So um, I would love it if maybe you could kind of introduce yourself, let people know a little bit more about you, kind of what got you started. So where do I start? Maybe from the fact that I've been a long term expat, I've been an expat for 21 years now, and I have also worked in personal development for around 18 years. So these two brought me to working with expats and help, helping them to thrive. So as you mentioned, it is in many cases, if not in all of them, the mindset. So what I do is I work with expats all around the world and I help them to really find their happiness wherever they are, whether it's a new country, whether it's if they decide to go back, whether it's their home country. I help them boost their confidence and find the resources that they already have, but maybe they don't know how to access them, you know, in the midst of all the procedures, formalities, processes, so that they can really not only manage and get by, you know, and survive, but that they can thrive and be their real selves mm -hmm. wherever they are. Absolutely. And so you do a lot, I guess, uh, with people moving to Germany. Mm. Um, and this, that yeah. I also read, and we also talked about this, that you spent also personally a lot of time in Germany. Exactly. So I prefer to say what I do rather than what my title is, because I think it better explains how I can help if I just say I'm a talent manager or I'm a learning and development consultant or what I do now is coaching, but I have done learning and development and talent management. So I took 
people's potential and unleashed it, unlocked it. I've worked in, in Germany for many years, altogether eight years. I lived in Frankfurt, Karlsruhe and Braunschweig. Mm. Uh, so this is probably how we met because I'm still attached to Germany, although I don't live there at the moment, but you never know what the future holds. So I worked for two recruitment companies in, in, in Germany and I have met many, many amazing people. Yeah, and I think also I checked online and I've been through your website thoroughly. And I think the coolest part about your website is probably that you're not, you don't just say, you know, I am a coach or I am able to kind of lead you along the right path to becoming a successful expat, you know, living in not just Germany, but any country, but you actually built this kind of like program around it that even got me excited, even though, you know, I've been here for so long, but I see this program and, yeah. you know, it says like, it's a thrive abroad program and it could be, you know, 10 weeks long and personal coaching and stuff. And I thought that that was just a really cool way yeah. to kind of, I guess, show people the potential that they could have and, and the access that they could get to really make sure that they thrive in this new yeah. environment, right? So very, Thank very you. cool. I built it actually off the back of the demand that I received. So people have been coming to me with similar challenges and I thought, okay, I really need to build something for them. Having been an expert myself, having trained as a corporate trainer experts all my life, now that I think about it, I have only worked with expats my, all my 21 years of expat life. And I thought I need to build something for them so that they yeah, have a purpose, meaning, direction, mm -hmm. and are super happy. What would you say to somebody who was just moving, not just to Germany, but to any country, of course, for the first time? How could they really set themselves up for success, not during the move, but actually before? Like, is there anything that we can do as mm. expats to kind of mentally prepare ourselves before we actually make that big step? Of course there is. Um, you, you've said mentally prepare. So this is what I will get at because we start with the research, you know, with the paperwork, with uh, joining Facebook groups, uh, uh, looking up all this information online, you know, the neighborhoods you want to live and the healthcare in that country. And we join language uh, and courses. And this is all good because you need to prepare. If you fail to prepare, you should prepare to fail. Most of us know it. Um, but I think what I have experienced, what I have noticed is that we forget to prepare ourselves mm -hmm. and we forget to do this check-in with ourselves if we have the right mindset. What I would suggest we do is to tap into our resources and trust or believe in ourselves that we can manage whatever challenges come up and they will <laughs> this has to be clear we will be able to embrace them so i would start with boosting our self-confidence and self-belief that it will be difficult complicated to say the least maybe just different but if we go with the mindset that i can manage that i've done it before if we actually remind ourselves all the occasions situations that we have tackled in the past, you know, all the difficulties that we've overcome, I think this will be the best preparation. I remember when I moved, not last time, but the one before, I was moving with my family. I, even though I had done it before many, many times, I went crazy. I spent, I think, months with my to-do list, trying to set myself for success and have all the information ready. I was moving from, from Barcelona, Spain to France, and, and then I stopped in the, in the middle of it thinking, you can do it. You've done it so many times. You're helping people to do it. So you can manage. But I think because I had a, a nine month old boy, I really wanted to make sure that not only myself, but my family, you know, was ready for it. And then when I stopped and I thought, you've done it before, you can manage. So I think the mindset is key. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's for mm -hmm. sure. And I think like we don't take enough time for ourselves to really like step back in and ask ourselves, you know, are we actually, like, are we prepared? Yes, but are we actually prepared? You know, are we mentally prepared? Yeah. And are we ready for it? And I think sometimes mm -hmm. the excitement of the move kind of masks that and people say, oh, it's yeah. gonna be amazing, you know, but they, they don't set themselves up already knowing, okay, you know, it is gonna be amazing, but there are so many other steps along the way that, that will make it hard, you know, it's, yeah. it's inevitable, regardless of where you move to. And it's yeah. not just Germany and the fact that it's a difficult language to learn and maybe people aren't always super friendly. Um, it can happen anywhere and it always happens. And as you mentioned, Absolutely. it doesn't matter how many times you do it, you know, it still can happen. You just have to kind of tell yourself and, yeah. and understand your emotions and what you're going through and what you will go through. With this. Absolutely. Like a, check, a quick check in, you yeah. know, I can do it. I can handle it. I've done it before. I'm confident I can manage. And, and instead of doing all the lists and, and, and researching or overdoing the research, I think to take time maybe to, to meditate or to figure out a routine. Yeah, for 
for sure. To prepare yourself mentally. Definitely important, absolutely. And you've also mentioned before um, how important it is to kind of ask yourself, what is my why? And I know you mentioned it sounds, you know, so phil philosophical <laughs> or something, but um, I agree. And it got me thinking and, and I, I started realizing, you know, I never asked myself that question. My why was because I met my, my boyfriend who, I mean, at the time was my boyfriend, now my husband. And that was just kind of my why. But I was wondering, is it super important to kind of figure out, I guess, a little bit more complexity to it? Or yeah, how mm -hmm. do people figure out exactly why? Because I guess it's not just for work or just for your husband or, or your girlfriend or whatever. Mm -hmm. There might be more to yeah. it, but I'd love if you could kind of like expand yeah. on that. Sure. What is my why yeah. question? Sure. Yeah, that, that's a good one. Yeah, so as you mentioned, we are always excited or most of the times we're excited about the move and we kind of take it for we take the why for granted you know it might be for love it might be for work it might be for family reasons i think it is good from experience again to know your reasons so if it is for the laugh to know exactly why you're doing it to also have some additional reasons not only that job not only the laugh because if it doesn't work out which it can happen at least you know what were the reasons that you do it but for yourself including and considering and taking yourself into account mm -hmm. so that in case things do not work out according to to your plan you're not disappointed so so that you don't set unrealistic expectations so if you say i'm moving because of this job i'm moving because i want a new challenge i am moving because i'm curious about this culture i'm moving because my husband or my boyfriend is from the country, I would like to spend some time there, then at least you have this reason and then it gives you some kind of direction, mm -hmm. right? You can then easier set goals because you know why you're moving. And if you have any challenges and difficulties, I think it will be just easier to, to embrace them. Yeah, some people move um, because they think life will be better, you know, somewhere else. So they, they don't do it being very very self-aware and they escape or they run away and what unfortunately tends to happen is that the problems or the, the issues that they had in their home country or in the previous country accompany them follow them so that they find themselves again disappointed unhappy overwhelmed so if you know why you're moving you'll be moving for the right reasons and if anything should change you'll be um, in the position to to change your decisions to move on go back and you won't feel guilty about it yeah, for sure. I think for me, you know, I never really did ask myself that question, I guess, but I think uh, it's also important to know, like, I guess it's never too late, you know? So for me, yes, it's obvious, you know, I moved here for love and I moved here because I really wanted to be with him. But uh, at the same time, I also felt like sometimes I probably wasn't that fair to him. And sometimes I'm still not that fair to him because I put so yeah. much pressure on the fact that I moved for him. I gave up my whole life for him. But if you step back and look at that then you also think you know what my life here is amazing you know even if I wasn't with my husband at the moment I probably wouldn't even go back to Canada to be honest because there's so many other reasons yeah. why I moved and it wasn't just him you know like yeah. there's yeah. other reasons amazing. to blame you know and I think yeah. that absolutely I've just figured that out now which is seven years later yeah. so had I have known that at the beginning I have to say, I think for me and for him, it would have been a lot easier because now I never, you know, yeah. I, I can't blame things on him when anything goes wrong. Yeah, exactly. It, we tend to hold others accountable. So it's the job, it's the country, it's the language, it's the partner. But if we did it because, we, if we did it for our reasons, then we cannot blame anyone. We can just yeah. observe and say, okay, I made this decision. Now it's time to make another one, but then no one is to blame. And I think you're just fairer to yourself and to, to, to everyone else. Yeah, I think so too. And I think, um, I mean, for me, it's really cool that I'm able that I'm able to see this now. But um, it's even better, of course, when people can see that from the get go. Uh, but sometimes it happens, you know, that people kind of like lose focus or lose that clarity as to why did they really mm. come. So, do you have any tips for people to kind of be able to really ingrain that into them and remember and kind of keep on track and maintain that focus and maintain that clarity when they move forward into their new life? Mm -hmm. So I think with maintaining clarity and focus, um, we should take care of it, you know, whether we leave or whether wherever we are really, whether we, we stay or leave. So we think that in the new country, we, we tend to have unrealistic expectations and, and we think that after the move, everything will still be like moonlight and roses. And we expect that things will just happen for us, that we will get a lot of help, but we still are accountable for our goals, for our life. 
So we need to continue working on our clarity. So if there are things that we know keep us focused, we need to continue doing them and even to a bigger extent abroad. So I would take some things with myself, if I can put it this way. So if I used to do routines back home or in the previous country where I lived, I will take those routines because I know they work for me. If I know that I love swimming, I will go and find a swimming pool, you know, in the new country. If I know I'm a social person, I will go and I will look for places where I can meet people, where I can interact. So I will make sure that I do not wait for someone to come and, and, and keep me focused and, and clear about my goals. I will take charge of those myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think really going back, I guess, yeah, to this, maybe creating a sort of list and actually funny that you mentioned that is because at the very, very end of the program, and I was telling you this, this is what we lack in the program is this personal development and moving forward. And that was my very tiny yeah. tip at the very end was what worked best for me was definitely actually being able to write down a list of the things that I love from back home and integrate them into my new life. And I mean, it always changes, of course, you might have kids or meet new friends and, and your focus or yeah. your intentions or, I don't know, passions might change. Uh, but constantly referring back to that list has always helped me kind of, you know, I always say I miss just going for a Tim Hortons coffee in Canada, uh, for any Canadians will know exactly what I'm talking about, probably Americans too, where we just like go and we sit and drink coffee and eat donuts, you know, at Tim Hortons with my friends. And we did it like almost daily. And so being able to kind of take that and reintegrate that into my new life and then find things that were not only par to what I was doing back home, but perhaps even better. Of course, those friendships I miss every day and that's, that's normal, but I've been able to create new friendships and explore new coffee shops and and find ones that I really, really love and that are super unique and that have allowed me to meet even more people. So I think that that is such an important uh, way to kind of integrate and feel comfortable in a country. But then, of course, you've also got that big question of, okay, I'm, I'm happy here, you know, with my life, but how do I actually integrate into the country and like meet the locals and and feel comfortable this way so do you have any tips like is there a wrong Mm -hmm. or a right way to actually integrate into a country well i don't i don't think there is you know the way the right or the wrong way absolutely not because it depends on the individual um what you mentioned before is that you know it it, it ties in very well with focus and clarity if you're self-aware you will know what keeps you focused wherever you are the same with clarity if you are a person who likes setting goals you will know why you're there right we started with the why so everything will be just smoother so i think the mindset not having expectations not judging but just observing will help you then determine how can i integrate we mentioned the language of course you want to start learning language before in an ideal case scenario even if you say well i'm here just for a year or two um i don't need this language it's it, it's not necessary for me to speak German, French, in my job. If you approach it, that it is an adventure, that it's like a cultural insight. And if you learn the language, you can meet people through that. You don't need to, again, aim for a certain level. As as for integration, there are many, many things you can do, but I would keep the ways that you know appeal to you. Mm -hmm. And if you're open, you will take everything with a lot of curiosity rather than comparing, oh, this is like this here. It wasn't like that back home and in the previous country where I lived. So I might be repeating myself, but I think I'm doing it on purpose so that this sticks with, 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 the, with the audience that's watching us to be curious and to um, observe rather than judge and do everything that you know appeals to you, that you used to do. But like you said, adding maybe the special German touch, even upgrading your experience. Definitely. And I think I have to be honest, as an international myself, I think uh, we judge all too all too often and I think that it happens a lot in Germany you know where somebody comes here and then they just like kind of roll get into this like rolling vicious ball where like the expats come together and you know they're constantly bickering and complaining about you know Germany does this and like we don't need to Mm -hmm. learn a language especially I mean in Berlin of course it's easy not to learn the language you can speak English but I think Mm -hmm. yeah these things are so so key to properly integrating and I think that's the biggest thing like you mentioned actually being able to you know like go out and be curious rather than judge and I think we always like daily need to step back and say okay you know yes it's easy to judge and it's easy to compare but sometimes you just have to say stop you know like (laughs) stop yourself from doing that um and be curious and embrace the fact you came here for a reason you know and it wasn't to complain or to judge it was 
to explore Absolutely. something new and to embrace something new. Yeah. So maybe the things we love back home aren't necessarily yeah. the same as here, but there are definitely, yeah. I mean, every day, some things happen that I don't like in Germany, but every day I always find some kind of silver lining or a, a, another reason why I moved here and not just being for love, mm. you know, so yeah, I think that's really cool. Sure, of course, there are many, many practical tips, right? If we were to come up with a list of what everyone should do or can do, yes, we would start with the language, we would, um, I, I would, I would recommend joining Facebook groups with other experts, but also with other locals. If you like sports, join local sports clubs. This is where you will also meet the locals. Uh, you, will go, you will do something good for yourself, for your body and soul. Um, we mentioned the language course where you can network. So it's not only for the language purposes, but you can um, meet other like-minded people. Mm -hmm. um, and then just being being open, you know, you can, you, can, you can meet people sitting on the bus, you can integrate just walking down the street if you're again, curious and, and open. Yeah. And I think that that also answers the following question that I want, wanted to ask you is that we as internationals or as expat, expats, especially when we come here uh, in an English speaking job, or perhaps we already know a couple of people here who do speak the English language um, or French or whatever, you know, there's different types of these expat bubbles yeah. that we like to call them here, especially in Dusseldorf. Um, but it's so easy to kind of fall in these patterns of just making this you know little bubble of friends and then never leaving it so do you have any tips of like how to get people out of this expat bubble and really kind of maximize mm -hmm. on their potential here so i i wouldn't go to the extreme so i think it is good to to hang out with other expats you know for sanity reasons because they will understand you uh, you have a lot in common so if you say no i need to avoid this group or that group because i really need to integrate and learn you know the language then you might find yourself forcing into something. So mm -hmm. um, I think if you just maintain a balance of meeting the locals, you know, for the integration purposes, just because you're curious, you want to learn about the culture and about the traditions, but then you can a few times a week meet people from your own country or other expats. And if we talk about potential, and here I mean potential at work, Mm -hmm. Some some experts they they feel like they cannot truly be themselves abroad, so they tend to do what's expat friendly. So they don't really go beyond what they truly would be capable to do otherwise. So again, this this is where we would go back to to the mindset to yeah. boost your confidence and knowing your strengths, knowing what you're good at, um, and just unleashing it. It's I mean it's not an easy thing to do that's for sure and I think that's why we have amazing people like you to support us I have I think my best example has got to be one of my best friends who moved from Canada over to Germany just a couple of years ago and I have to say like he's been the best example of somebody who has really maximized his potential he came from like an outstanding yeah. job in Canada but the way I knew him as a child and we've been best friends since we were little is he was super shy, you know, and he, he uh, had his small group of friends and he wasn't super outgoing, you know, he wasn't a huge partier. But then when he moved to Berlin, when he moved to Germany, he's just got this like energy and this excitement and this motivation. And he's an entirely different person, but in the best way possible, if that makes sense. So like, I just see him Amazing. and I know both sides of him now, but he's just like, it's, really made him you know this incredible human being and I think that he's more happy because of it because he's been able to really unleash that potential and make the best out of the situation and whether or not he stays wow. like for the long run I'm not sure but I think that for him this experience was just incredible and I have to say I don't see many people all that often kind of really reach that level especially without support mm. with someone like you for example so for him it was just yeah. amazing but I mean mm. I know for others um, it's not always <laughs> easy, you know, and some yeah. of us yeah. might reach a point. And I know a lot of my friends who I've met in Dusseldorf, this was actually the biggest reason why I created my welcome program was to encourage people to stay and to get through these hurdles. But sometimes I think at the end of the day, so it's just not for somebody, you know, or, and they don't know what to do next. Like they don't know, should I keep pushing on? Is it my fault that I'm like not able to integrate well here or is it okay to give up? Is it okay to go home? Is it okay to mm. move on? Mm. And I talk about this a little bit in the welcome program in terms of 
there's actually different stages of expat grief and how we might feel like we go through the stages of excitement we go through the stages of loneliness we go through the stages of hating yeah. all the paperwork and being like no I'm gonna go home and then we also have that stage of being super proud you know like I'm super proud right now and say yeah this is my city you know but sometimes we feel like we don't belong here or there and so there's so many different kind of like waves of emotions that we go through but at the end of the day how do we really know what the right decision mm -hmm. is because I think a lot of people just mm -hmm throw in the towel and say, I'm leaving because I don't know how to do this or vice versa. They think everybody's going to think I failed. So I'm going to stay here and be miserable because I don't want my family to judge me when I go back home. Yeah, um, it's a very valid point. I'm actually working with someone uh, uh, from Stuttgart who wants to move on and, and they are not sure whether they should stay, whether they should go, whether they should go back. And you mentioned failing and giving up, first of all. I would refrain from using these these words, even though I know that we we just tend to 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 see it all black. So I think if we started with with a lot of clarity why we moved, and if we are focused, and if we take care of ourselves, and we try to unleash our potential, and we still notice that mm, it's it's not happening, I do not feel right. Then it's it's not failing; it's just taking another decision. And it's absolutely fine to move on to another country, to move on to another city within that country or go back. But again, not feeling guilty or, or having to justify or explain to anyone. As long as we can explain to ourselves, this is all that should count. Mm -hmm. So some places are just not for us, even though you know, we, we have put all the effort, if we have. And we just need to realize that, well, it was an experience. I learned from it. I was curious. I have become more resilient, more interesting. And I am taking all this and I will become a different person, uh, a better person, you know, in my next destination. To stay, even if you're miserable, is the worst thing you can do. So, um, you know, it, it's, I know it might sound banal, but we learn from decisions. So there are no right and wrong decisions. The decision to move to a place was the best decision you could have taken, I could have taken. And here, if I were to speak from my experience, I moved from Spain and, and France, which I mentioned already. And after living in France for a year and a half, together with my family, we decided that France wasn't for us. It was an amazing country, but we just didn't feel that it gave us what we needed at that point in time. So we might go back, mm -hmm. but where we were in life, it just wasn't for us. It's not now to, to, to criticize and, and, and mention stereotypes. It just wasn't a good fit for us at that point in time. So we moved to Poland again we are not sure whether we'll be staying or moving but we're trying to make the best of it while we are here while it lasts uh, because after having lived in six countries i know that being mindful just being in the moment is the best piece of advice i, I could give to anyone definitely and and being able to look back and really say you know what i did um, even if it was just you know six months a year two years five years i think a lot of people mm -hmm. always say oh i don't want to have had thrown away you know five years of my life and I think you're right that's the wrong way to yeah. look at it uh, it's it's more like yeah. you know even if you were there six months I've had some friends who went on travel experiences for six months expecting to go there for the rest of their lives and have come back home yeah and they were always the type of people for example who said you know I can't stay in this tiny town I don't want to live like and work in this dead-end job but then when they left they were able to come back and it gave them more clarity that that is what they wanted you know they really enjoyed it they just needed a little bit kind of to get out of that shell and experience the world and then see okay you know it's cool but I'm really excited to go back to my roots and fall in love with yeah. home again you know which is also okay yeah I had you kind of put together a number of questions that um, expats and internationals commonly ask you on a daily basis um, answers that you constantly have to go through and one of them that I found really interesting that you mentioned was um, as expats how are we supposed to find a direction in life when many of us actually have no real destination or no roots uh, to kind of move forward mm -hmm. with so I'd love yeah. to know that how you answer that question when people ask you, mm -hmm. you know, like I don't know where I'm going to be in 10 years. So how do I focus on my yeah. life now when I have no kind of like concrete plans yeah. or things to look forward yeah. to perhaps? Yeah, this is probably one of the most common questions 
because we, we feel like we need to have it all figured out. We feel like we need to know uh, how long we are staying and what we are staying for and what will happen next. So this is where I encourage people to write their mission statement, think about their vision. And this is where they get all stressed. Like, I have no idea. How can I just draw something if I don't know what's going to happen next week? And the purpose of drawing your, your vision for the next three, five years or writing a mission statement is not for this vision to really come true exactly how you drew it or wrote it is for you to have motivation to get up and having goals to work towards and having a direction. And it's absolutely fine if you're flexible with those goals and if this direction changes, but it will give you, you know, the stability um, and also confidence that you're not stranded anywhere, that you have a plan and you're working towards that plan. As, as soon as you feel that, oh, this is not, is not working out for me anymore, you're more than happy to change this plan. But to have a plan is to give you motivation. This is, I think, what I'm trying to explain. It's for the motivation purposes. Yeah, yeah we, we cannot really foresee what, what future holds, you know, for us in store. So we need to be, we need to be adaptable. So if we have a vision, we will be able to respond to, to those opportunities that come and we have clarity, we'll be able to take the right decisions and say, because of this and that reason, I am moving, I'm going back, I am staying. And it then feels like I'm in harmony, you know, I'm in sync. I do not live in the past. I'm not regretting, I'm not comparing. You know, I don't uh, look in, into the future too much. I'm just here and now. Yeah, that's super similar actually. Um, last year, I, it's gonna sound super random, but last year I took a sewing class with a Swede, I believe she, she was Swedish. And she mentioned something super random in the class. And she said, you know, in order for somebody to be happy, you know, in the now and where they are, they need to focus on three things. And I was like, okay, what? She was like, they need to have some, somebody to love, somebody to love, something to do. So whether that's work or a hobby or whatever, you need to kind of feel like busy and, and yeah. on the go. And then you need to have something to look forward to. And I think the third mm -hmm. kind of resonated with me the most, especially during this pandemic was like, I can be happy in the now yeah. as long as I have something to look forward to. And that's, I think what, as you mentioned, is so important is kind of like having that plan, you know, set in place. It can change, you know, you don't have to look forward to the same thing all the time. It can yeah. be smaller, it can be huge. Yeah. Uh, but for me during this pandemic and I, I caught uh, COVID and I was, I was inside for like a solid four weeks and it just about killed me. And the whole time I was just like, okay, like keep, you know looking forward you know at some point you're going to be able to go outside and there's something to look forward to at the end and that kind of yeah. I guess pushed me on and gave me the motivation yeah. to move forward yeah. yeah amazing story I mean I as I mentioned I moved I think I moved 29 times I had to count them and um, if I th think about all the cities and I've lived in six countries and I've been asked many times, oh, wh why did you move so often, so, so much? And, and how did you manage it all? And what was the reason? And how did you feel um, when leaving and then when coming to a new place? And I, I remember that I've always tried to remain very, very like excited and focused on, 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 on the moment, not to look back too much um, and not to, not to compare too much because then you just end up living you know in your in your head rather than enjoying what's around you I think mm. uh oh there's been so so many good tips that I know even uh for people who are just beginning and who are just moving to Germany or any other country but as well as for people who have perhaps lived here for a while you know or even Germans who decide to watch the video um I think that yeah. this uh, serves as a great amazing purpose I guess uh as a little walk away perhaps do you have any final tips or maybe ways that we can as internationals moving for the first time since you're a professional yourself at this <laughs> at moving and relocating what would be kind of like your biggest tip to ensure a stress-free and worry-free move hmm. I think we've mentioned a lot so I don't want to repeat myself I think I would dare to encourage everyone to go and live abroad even if it's for a a short period of time because it it would change your life this is I, I i conducted a survey with expats and nomads around the world and the, the the comment or the contribution that has been repeated over and over again was it will broaden your horizons it will change your life and it will be the best lesson about yourself and the world so this is maybe not a tip but like a nudge a push for everyone <laughs> to 
to go outside their comfort zone and do it because they think they cannot, but they can. And once they've done it, it might sound surprising, but I would, I would advise them to be selfish, to really take care of themselves first. Yeah. Um, because only then can they uh, be a, a, a better parent, a better partner, a better employee. So to really take care of, of their health, of their um, well-being, to work out routines, morning and evening routines, that will keep them in sync with themselves, in harmony with themselves. I could, I could talk ages about that, but each and every client that I work with, we tackle that beast first. And the second beast is, who are you? What's, what is your potential? What are you amazing at? What makes you different? How do you stand out? So having your routines and having you know, the peace of mind, the harmony and knowing how you stand out in the crowd, you, you can do just about anything amazing so thank you yeah. thank you so so much for all of this amazing You're information welcome. that i know will help so many wonderful people and um if anybody wants more information they can go to your website lucina um they can also check out the thrive program a thrive abroad program there as well and lucina actually offers as well these free discovery sessions that are i guess 30 minutes long right um, where yeah. you guys, where I guess people can basically just, you know, go through their thoughts and the process and where they are in their life yeah. and kind of build up some sort of structure to see how it is that yeah. you'll be able to work together, uh, which I think is incredible. Yeah. And then maybe if you're willing um, to also be able to offer this amazing ebook that I checked out and that made me fall in love with you <laughs> from, from the beginning, uh, maybe if you're willing to share that with them, then we can also include below a way for them to get in contact with you um, sure. to be able to download that if you're up for that absolutely it's downloadable so we can we can include the the access link and then i'm more than happy for them to download it amazing well thank you so so much cool. that is all thank you jenna it was lovely lovely to be here